Welcome to Strategic Alignment, ensuring long-term profitability in multi-brand franchising, where three industry leaders delve into the intricacies of multi-unit and multi-brand ownership. Join Jeff Bannon and Greg Sisa, succession planners at the Rawls Group, along with Nate Riordan, founder of West Coast Franchise Law, as they explore a wide range of topics, from franchise approval and crucial nuances to consider before finalizing business agreements, to business structures, exit transition strategies, and estate plans, this series covers it all. In the franchise world, the franchisor is not just a business partner, but also a key player in all your franchise ventures. You, know, you, you first of all have to understand if you have someone that's actually qualifiable to take over you know, uh, your franchisees or your franchises and your portfolio. You know, and where are your beneficiaries in their life at this point? What age are they? What maturity are they? You know, at what age do you feel uh, your beneficiaries are are able to take control of the company? Um, you know, but one one great thing about the estate planning and 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 uh, writing in your wills and trusts, you know, about putting in limitations, you know, the, on your beneficiaries, uh, you know, as to what age they are able to take over some of these assets, you know, which will avoid any kind of nightmare scenario, so to speak, you know, where a generation inherits something that they just aren't ready to take over. Um, you know, some of these provisions that that you might put in, especially when it comes to your shareholders agreements, is uh, putting in qualified air parameters, the, you know, so you are actually um, building and training up or giving, you know, clear expectations as to what Putting in qualified air parameters and setting the expectations uh, for a next generation of ownership as to what they need to achieve in order to be an employee in the company and also in order to be a, a shareholder in the company. Um, so these are all very key, important concepts when it comes to business planning for that franchisee owner in the future. Yeah, and I, I speak. I think that speaks a little bit to one of the biggest estate planning challenges um, a lot of business owners have is that you know if I'm going to go get an estate plan, uh, typically it's easy to say um, I love my kids equally. I want them all to have the same thing. Um, the reality is is that kids aren't made equal. Um, one may be very interested in operating a business, and the other one just might want to you know pursue an art career. Uh, does that mean that both both Children should have an equal share in the business. And if not, then how do we differentiate between who should receive what in the estate plan and how is that going to work? And I think to, to Greg's point about the, the qualified air language, um, what we don't want to do is tell one of the children, well, nope, you don't get any any stock because he's already here and, and, and that's it. You're getting all of it. What you do is create the parameters and manage the expectations ahead of time that say, we love to have you come in the business. We love to have you be a shareholder, but here's what you got to do. Um, and if if you are comfortable with that approach, then we, you know, naturally are going to shift away from an estate planning perspective of everybody gets everything equally. Then the question becomes: um, Are you comfortable if, at the time of death, we don't know what the value of the business will be, what the value of real estate would be, what the value of the other accounts will be? There's a good chance that one child ends up with a um, an inheritance that has more value to it than the other child. And for a lot of people who haven't really thought through, that's a that's a hard concept. Well, I don't want this one to get mad and say, I, I you know, I get I favored this child over this child. Um, but the important idea here is to understand you have to answer a question, what's meaningful uh, to the beneficiaries, to, to the next generation? And what's meaningful might be greater shares of stock over here. And what's meaningful over here might just be passive income stream so that I can pursue an art career, for example, and make sure that my bills are paid. Um, so when you get into that context, you start stepping out of the, let's divide every asset into equal shares for our children into saying, let's let's give meaningful assets to the children. What would mean the most to them? Okay, And that takes a lot more thought, a lot more consideration in terms of what does that ultimately mean um, down the road a long way. But from a basic blocking and tackling perspective, I think um, depending on what state you live in, probate is a challenge um, in many states. Um, some are easier than others, but as a general um, first step is to ask the question, should I have a revocable living trust and a pour over will structure that would shield assets from the probate process um, in that state? Uh, for clients that have assets in multiple states, 
Uh, what you want to avoid is is having probate opened in multiple states that your executor or your trustee has to go deal with. And by creating a revocable living trust and having it in there, what we do is streamline that process for your successors to say, I have instant um, control and management of the company. Um, I don't have to petition a court. I don't have to go through all of these hoops and wait for um, approval from, from the court system in order to conduct normally or ordinary course of business. So as we you know, start with the, the basic 101 of the estate planning it would be, should I get a pour over will and a revocable living trust? I need to title my assets in that revocable trust. And then I need to get comfortable with the idea of um, what is meaningful to my beneficiaries and what expectations do I want to lay for my um, beneficiaries in terms of, of ownership in the future. And so, you know, among, among the, those basic documents, I think, you know, um, that would be the core components. This is only one out of our eight episode series focused on ensuring long-term profitability in multi-brand franchising. Continue listening to the series now or come back for more. Each topic featured may want you to learn something new. Succession planning allows you to create more control over the future you envision by proactively addressing possible, probable, and potential issues impacting your long-term goals. You can create many options at your fingertips. Do you have a question you want to discuss with an expert? Feel free to reach out directly to Jeff, Greg, or Nate at the email addresses listed on the screen. Strategic alignment, ensuring long-term profitability and multi-brand franchising is a part of the Rawls Group's Advancing Your Business, People, and Legacy Conversation Series.